Previously, we've looked at a load pass filter. We've also looked at other circuits and we've done them on breadboard as well as this waveform software using our analog discovery 2. And that can be found in the playlist linked below the like button in the description. But now we are going to be looking at our high pass filter. It's going to be very, very similar to the low pass. Um, even the uh, calculation for the transfer function is going to be very similar. Uh, we go over how to find our WP. Uh, basically, we just set our C equal to 1 over R1 times our WP. And our WP we can just say as 2 pi times the frequency. The frequency here is 5 kilohertz. Um, so we're going to have this right here. And then we're going to um, put this in here, of course, and here, of course. And then we would use the rectangular form. We would convert it to the polar form, divide that out, get the magnitude once we factor this in as well. And then we would also want our V out divided by our V input. And so we would set these equal to each other because they should be equal to or relatively similar for the gain because that's what we were calculating. A V is for the gain. And we'll see that in our WaveGen software as we've done previously. But now we can look back here. Um, again, we are just going to do these calculations. Uh, I did not include them in the lab report just because pressed on time, but we have our high pass filter. And in the documentation, we have all of this. My partner, of course, did his calculations. And that is how we would calculate it. And we see our RP. Um, and then we would find the capacitance just by setting equal to, because our WP is the 2 pi times our FP. Um, it should be equal to 5 nanofarads, because our frequency is 5K. Um, then we have the spice simulations down here, as we always do. We were not able to put results in, uh, but more on that later. And so. By adding a capacitor in series with our input resistor R1 in an inverting amplifier, a simple single pole high pass filter is created. The transfer function or high pass filter is given by the following. So we have a key concept. Capacitors are short circuits at high frequencies and open circuits at low frequencies. I like to think of this as LO, open. So a capacitor in parallel shorts out a signal at high frequencies, if we have a capacitor here, and a capacitor in series blocks the signal at low frequencies. The circuit in figure six can also be used as a differentiator with finite gain at high frequencies. So that's just a little tip. And we have the same measurements as we did last time for our low pass filter. And so that way we're going to use the same resistors. The resistor I'm gonna be using is about 6.69 kilo ohms. And then the two resistors, I had to combine them in parallel. They're going to have almost 20 kilo ohms of resistance. And our capacitor is about 4.75. I believe. So very close to five, but not exactly. And now we can look at our breadboard. So with the breadboard, this is our previous circuit. Um, what I'm going to want to do, all that I'm going to want to do is I can remove this capacitor from here. I'm just going to pull it out. Our R2 still 20 kilo ohms. We are going from the negative to here. And then from here we are, and we can see that it's in the same column. It's just a little bit shifted. So it's going to go here, it's going to go here, and then it's going to terminate with this into here. So it's going to go into the voltage output. And then we want our R1 to be in the series with our capacitor. So I'm going to pull out our voltage inputs here. Um, this is our R1. I'm going to put this lead here, and then I'm going to terminate this lead somewhere just over here. So it's going to look like that. And so they can add together. So I'm going to take our voltage input, which is this yellow, I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to take the orange one just so we can monitor it and pull it in here. And that's really it for a high pass filter if we modify it from the low pass. And we built the low pass circuit in the previous video. Again, linked below the like button in the playlist. But basically, our black wire, or this black wire, this far black wire is ground right here. I'm sorry, this black wire is the negative input for our op amp. This red wire is the voltage positive input, so that powers our op amp, those two. This one is gonna ground our input, the positive input. This black wire right here is our grounding wire, and these two are for the analog discovery. It's just grounding it to compare it to ground. And then we have our negative right here. If we look at the op amp, and it's going out here, we've made a node. And then these two resistors are connected in series, just to make a 20 kilo ohm resistor. And then it goes into the voltage output. So the voltage output will flow back because of the negative feedback. And then we have our R1 right here. This is the brown resistor. And then we have our capacitor here. So we have voltage flowing into it, into this way. So if you look at it and you really look at it, it looks very close to the diagram, even though not really. I tried to make it as close as possible. 
And so this is going to be the circuit that we have. And so after we get a good look at this, we can go back into the waveform software. So we're gonna click run all on our wave gen and click run here and we'll click master enable is on. And I have gone ahead and made the frequency five kilohertz for each of these. Um, our frequency is five kilohertz but we do have some kind of um, error here. We can see that if we divide our V out by our V in, we see that we get a voltage of approximately 2.03, and that is incorrect. So looking back at the breadboard, some breadboard, some things I can notice is that maybe instead of using this wire, um, we can shorten it. Instead, just putting this capacitor and this resistor straight into this part right here. And then same thing with this one, pulling it over and going straight into the voltage output. That way you minimize these wires and also bring some of these closer together. Also, the, res the capacitor, there is a lot more tolerance to a capacitor than a resistor. So capacitors, uh, those ones that we're using, have a plus minus 10% tolerance, where the resistors only have a plus minus 5%. So that can be the error there. So in the next one, where we build a comparator with hysteresis, we are going to be tightening things up and also getting close to concluding this lab.